I heard that in fourth grade, you had your first taste of business ownership. <laughs> it was, kind of in a franchise type model. So tell us a little yeah, bit about yeah. this. You know where I'm going. I, I totally do, except it was probably my 18th taste by fourth grade. <laughs> fourth grade, I already graduated to uh, an illegal franchise concept. <laughs> Good. Uh, we wow. start, we oh, start huh. early in Houston. Welcome to Dial It Up, where we're going to be talking about all things franchise marketing and business growth. I am your host, Jamie Adams. To my right, Jordan Wilson. Slap in the bass. Yes, Yes. he does, always. To my far left, Patrick Crawford. Let's go to the phones. (laughs) (laughs) We'll do that that in a bit. Okay, all right, no, is this not, okay, they're not lighting up? All right. And to Patrick's right... Julia Cook. I'm here to tell you we don't have a live studio audience and there's no phones. No phones. (laughs) And today, for the first time, yes, we have a special guest for the entire episode. It's him. Yes. And unless you've been hiding under a rock in the franchise community, you probably know who this guy to my left is. But if you don't, I welcome Mr. Red Boswell. Red Boswell. Welcome. welcome, Appreciate it. Honored to be here. Yep. But before we get into the bulk of today's episode and why Red is here, I want to make a quick statement. Jordan, you're going to like this. Jordan, today we're going to be talking about franchise sales. Yes. And being that Jordan and I— This is what we do. Yeah, we're in sales. We're the sales guys. You feel like this one is us. You're probably proud that this this episode is not about you guys. Marketing can take a little backseat if they need to on this episode. Uh, Yeah. If there's sales without marketing, you're doing it wrong. That's actually true. Oh, hey no. there. Read any comments to that? Uh, uh, to those I think we need everyone. I'm the uh, so. I'm the balance here. I, I always consider myself a sales and marketing franchise see? executive. So, <laughs> oh, uh, I see what he did Thank here. You. Balance. And that's, that's why we put you in the middle. In the force. <laughs> that's, that's why we put you in the force. That works out well. Side. Yes. So today's episode is about franchise sales, franchise development. It is a hot topic always when we're talking to franchises here at Scorpion. Yeah. And we thought it best to bring in an expert, somebody that's been in the franchise community in a lot of different capacities. So, Red, starting off, I know you built a franchise, you sold a franchise. Mm -hmm. But I want to go back further because I was doing some research. And I heard that in fourth grade, you had your first taste of business ownership. (laughs) Kind of in a franchise type model. So tell us a little bit about this. You know where I'm going. I I totally do, except it was probably my 18th taste by fourth grade. We we start early in Houston. (laughs) Fourth grade, I already graduated to uh, an illegal franchise concept. (laughs) Good. Uh, The the Houston (laughs) Oilers, shout out, was... uh, Ward Moon, Hakeem Olajuwon. And... uh, that was the Rockets. Yep. Yeah. I'm on it. <laughs> Great. That was the Rockets. Yeah. Are you guys 20? Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, it's valid. It's Earl Campbell, yeah, 34. Oh, yeah. Hottest thing in school. And so I was across town with the, my mom doing some shopping, and I run into some Houston Oilers pencils, NFL pencils, said, got to have them, spent all my you know, allowance on this pencil set, took them to school, and I was the most popular kid in school. I had these cool pencils. So I'm like, you know, I don't care. I'm selling them. Cash is king. Yes. So everybody's asking, where can you get them? And I had some info no one else knew, and I wasn't about to give it away. So went back the next day, bought everything out of the store I could, took a loan from the parents, uh, set up friends in each room, got a little royalty on each each one. And boom, the Federal Trade Commission never caught up with me. <laughs> no. Yeah, well Until a, now. No. Yeah. <laughs> the so let's fast forward a little bit. You started a franchise uh, back in, what, 2004? Is that right? Around then, yeah. Okay. When you, you know, do you count when you started it, when you started working on it, or when you sold your first franchise? Well, let's start you know, when so. you started working on it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tell us a little about the oh, business. So back in, oh, man, 98, okay. I, I had a group kind of like this, but a little more intelligent. And, uh, <laughs> oh, and we, you know, we were talking about entrepreneurship and what can we start. And I had told them about a crazy idea, pooper scooper business. Great. Scoop and dog poop. Of course. Oh, and, yeah. And, of course, a, a couple of years later, they're like, oh, yeah, you're a marketer. You got to start it. I said, yeah. heck yeah, I'm a marketer. I'll show you how it's done. Nice. And so I started becoming the greatest gorilla marketer. Anything free I could get and market my business, I did. Okay. Wow. So built it up. It took forever. It wasn't something easy, but built it to seven figures, scooping nothing but dog poop. And wow. um, had some fun in doing it. You know, we everybody called me the entrepreneur. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, hey there. No, oh, there's a pun there. Yeah. Number one and the number two. So oh. <laughs> oh. I can go all day. I'm serious. So your, dog's, your dog's biscuits are our bread and butter. Oh, oh my yeah. Sorry. Great. Anyway. Seven figure business. Just, just the one location you yeah. own. Yeah. Okay, wow. how did you decide to franchise? What what was that path like? I had no idea what that word was, the F word, franchise. <laughs> but I knew we wanted to take it national. We had proven model. We had a great concept. So I started studying, should I get a loan? I don't have the credit. Can't get a loan. Okay, uh, how about investors? Uh, that's interesting. I don't want other people telling me what to do. Okay, how about licensing? I hear that's uh, pretty cool. No control. Okay, what's this franchising thing? That's the way we want to go. Mm -hmm. And so set about doing that. That's Interesting. Really cool. So how many franchises did you build up the business to be? Ultimately, it peaked at 148 in 28 states. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. Right. 148. Okay, so that's a great segue into a little bit about franchise sales. So tell us just high level, how did you go about identifying, finding people that you could sell a franchise to? What was that process like? Really, it, it, what succeeded was three things. Search engine optimization back yeah. in the good old days, right. SEO, mm -hmm. yep. portals, mm -hmm. and the big one, PR. We got publicity like crazy. I mean, only in America, the crazy idea. You guys laughed about it. The world laughed about it. Got in every magazine, every newspaper. Got plenty of national yeah. TV Makes press. Sense. Cool. Fun. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's great. So you sold the business eventually. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. eight. Uh, right like a week before the crash. I mean, it was right. really. Oh, wow. Uh, the bank was getting really sweaty, cautious at the at the closing table on that deal. Wow. wow. Uh, and it's still thriving today. It yep. didn't. Uh, we didn't do the, the the buyer wrong or anything. He's very very profitable. That's awesome. awesome. That's, that's really cool. That's, that's awesome. a great story. I have thought about buying a franchise one time in my life so far. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. You guys want to hear a story? Yeah, of course. I thought you were going to tell it. It's interesting. It. Well, debate <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that in a minute. Yeah. I love this He's guy. Leaning He's leaning left pretty He's hard at this point. He's going to stay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not like Tell us this. more, Jamie. <laughs> okay, I want to tell you. Yeah. 2008, 2009, I was living in Shreveport, but I was going to Dallas a bunch for work. And I walked into the sandwich shop called Jimmy John's. Yes, of course. Right? Now, yeah. I like to eat lunch fast. I was a Subway guy. Okay. And I went to Jimmy John's, and I was like, I'm never going back to Subway. Got it. Mm. It was just such a better experience. So I actually called Jimmy John's. I inquired about a franchise. And they said, you know what? Sorry. You just missed it. We just sold that territory in the last couple Couldn't months. Sales guys. Mm. Yeah. Sales. Sales. And it's, oh, it's oh, still oh, killing oh. right now. So I said, okay, Shreveport's out. What about Ruston? I went to Louisiana Tech, mm -hmm. Ruston's college town. Ooh. I knew a lot of college kids would eat in Jimmy John's. I buy a franchise in Ruston. Ah, yep. oh, you know what? Ruston sold out. What is going on with Jimmy John's? So I'm like, okay, where in Louisiana can I put a Jimmy John's franchise? You know what? Louisiana sold out. Who on earth could have bought Jimmy John's in all Louisiana? You want to take a guess who it was? I Jimmy Johnson. I it was Drew Brees. Drew Brees. Yes, Drew Brees. Oh. Drew Brees. Oh. Yeah. Who's he? I mean, Exactly, exactly. You could have had Jamie Adams, you took Drew Brees, right? So that's my almost bought a franchise, one-time store. Yeah. Jordan, yeah. you ever thought about buying a franchise? I have thought about buying a franchise. I feel like I'm a uh, fun-loving individual. I, I feel so like that's I Thank agree. You guys so Even much. though you're on the right side. I agree with you. That's right. And so I think what fits my personality is a either an urban air or an altitude trampoline park. Okay. Urban air adventure park, something mm. that kids can go and play. Yep. It's fun. It's like a Chuck E. Cheese on steroids, yeah. right? Ooh. Only three million. Hey, Only three, okay. three mil? Yep. I'm it. dreaming, Red. I'm <laughs> doing a lot of dreaming. <laughs> I'm dreaming, Red. You ask, have I called them yet? I have not. Um, <laughs> Patrick, you yep. ever thought about buying a franchise? Never thought about buying one. Mm. Okay, well, maybe one day. But <laughs> I've thought about starting one. Hey, yo. <laughs> I got a concept. I'm glad you're here, Red. Um... <laughs> All right, okay. so our research shows that 100 out of 100 men are super uncomfortable buying lingerie. Mm. Okay. I can see that. And I that's because you go into a it. store. You had fun with it. Yeah. They go in, and then all of a sudden, people are looking at them, and they're like, what's this guy here? And look, I'm here to solve that. I don't want you to feel that anymore, because I know you have. Bring it in. Yeah. I don't want you to feel that ever. So I'd like to introduce Sup Bra. <laughs> Sup, bra. Sup, bra? A lingerie store Sup, where men can walk in and feel comfortable buying lingerie for their significant other. And now that you've heard the concept, who's ready to buy and who's the sales side now? Oh, wow. marketing. Right there. Yep. Well, okay, hang on. Time out. So this is this like a uh, sport clips for the lingerie? Ooh. Actually, that's a great way to for look at mat. it. Okay. Yeah. We might have a bar where you can get a drink. Okay. We might have sports on TV so that you can feel comfortable great. in there. And then, of course, an incredibly helpful staff. I really hope that you've trademarked this idea before someone Ooh. in the live studio audience oh, grabs it. I see someone taking notes right the now. The interwebs. Yes. <laughs> Julia. 
Have you ever thought about buying a franchise or perhaps starting your own concept? Well, like the thing is, I've been getting a lot of calls from somebody recently, and mm. I, you know, about uh, this really interesting concept, um, sup sup bra. Okay. <laughs> and I've been, I mean, yeah. honestly, I could show you. It's all Miss Calls, Patrick Crawford. It's yeah. super weird. Yep. I would never buy that. So that's no, 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 no. no. I would all say jokes super aside. Weird. <laughs> never actually thought about it, but if I were to, I know it would definitely be something along the lines of like a kids' swim school because awesome. I'm mm. passionate about water safety. I have have kids. Yep. I think it's something that a lot of people need. You know, so that's something I'd be and interested in. And only two to three mil again. <laughs> nice. Only, yeah, yeah which is We fine. are big I'm dreamers here. They right pay now. well it's in fine. California. Look, if there's one thing I know, you can always increase your credit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we work with a lot of franchises here at Scorpion, yeah. over 100 brands now. And it's almost universal today. One of the biggest hot topics in franchise marketing is around franchise development. Yep. Um, so we're, we get engaged with a lot from different franchise brands about, hey, how can you help me market my franchise to potential business owners, people that are looking or in the market to buy a franchise? How can you help me position my concept so that I can so I can make more franchise yeah, sales? Sure. So, Red, you've been doing this a long time. Got a debate topic for you. Bring it. Okay. So in the world of franchise sales, there are – kind of three primary channels that I hear most about. Yep. Right? You've got direct marketing, right? So just marketing your brand, bringing leads in through your website or through other channels, having them work by your own franchise sales team. That's mm -hmm. option number one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Option number two, you've got brokers. You know a lot about those things. Amen. I'm sure you're going to tell us a little about those things. And you got portals. Yep, sure thing. So each of us, I think, have a pretty strong opinion about what's the right mix yep. about these things. We'd love to hear from you first. What is the right mix amongst those three? And and we've yep. only got eight hours, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Plenty of time. Just That's right. Right. And the live audience will stay. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll abbreviate. No breaks. Yes. Um, I've always been a a guy who wants, who is a bit shotgun, meaning okay. let's get some of everything, mix it up, and nice. see what's working for me. Okay. Um, but still do it right. A lot of times someone will say, oh, that didn't work well, you didn't do it right. Yeah. Yeah. Or you didn't sure. give it the time. You didn't give it the investment. You didn't work with the right folks that knew what they were doing. Yep. That's right. So, for instance, uh, I mentioned oh, back in 2005, I start on portals. Okay. As so many franchisors do. That's kind of low-hanging fruit. It's easy. It's it's quantifiable. You know if it came in. Sure. It's easy to understand. So, this is Pet Butler. This is Pet Butler way okay. back in the day. Okay. And did okay with that. Um I got some leads. There wasn't as much, uh, you know, big data back then. Yeah. So the leads came in. Portals were significant. Now, fast forward uh, a, a mm -hmm. decade plus. Mm -hmm. A couple of years back, I was representing a large international Zor. In the North America, I bought about 100 portal leads a month. So okay. over a 12-month period, I'm, I'm measuring, I'm monitoring, I'm quantifying. Mm -hmm. do, you know, do you know what that is? Math. Yeah. Okay, well done. I think I nailed it. All right, good. Marketing. 1,200 <laughs> 1, 1, portal leads. <laughs> Okay, I paid forty to fifty dollars, fifty-two uh, per lead, so okay. close to fifty. Okay, that's dropping smart. serious coin. Yeah. Yes, right. That's over a million dollars. <laughs> Good math. Good math. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> Just know. Okay, almost sixty thousand okay. dollars. Okay, I closed. Now, super salesman red. Yeah, we know. Right? I closed one. <laughs> one of the one in the leads. whole year from the wow. portals. Oh, oh, right, times right. have changed, my yeah. friends. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I'm more chapped off about the amount of money or they. Freaking large amount of time I spent and my team so spent chasing 1,200 people. Because yeah. you're going to call them t no, multiple course times. Are, you're right? going to yeah. email them. You're going to follow up every way possible. You're going to, are they on LinkedIn? Let me see. You know, yeah. I mean, whew, I'm sweating just thinking about that. No, so okay. I'm, I'm, no longer, I'm no longer a fan. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. So X and A on the portal for red. Yeah. Okay. That makes me feel very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So Leading we, into my points. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? What so you I, think? I, I'll give you an example. If I'm an emerging franchisor and I'm coming into the space, I would 100% stay away from portals. What I hear the most from brands is that I get 400 leads and maybe two or three are good. So that's tough. The portal route is tough. Brokers, I think, are smart. If I would if I would go the broker route with my new brand, I would probably use brokers heavily till 10 to 20 of mine. Okay. And I would mix in direct marketing and still use those brokers till I got to about 50 franchisees. And then after that, I would probably go heavier um, just in the direct marketing after the 50. Okay. Yep. All right. Patrick, you're, you're starting sub bra. All right. <laughs> yep. How are you going to find potential business owners to buy concept? I'm calling red. <laughs> That's smart. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. okay. That's Look, I feel pretty confident in that. Um, you know, but I do feel direct marketing makes a ton of sense. Yep. Look, I've got to build a lot of awareness on my brand. First, it's emerging, yep. right? Okay. I am going to need a broker to help me out with it. Um, but I do want to do a lot of direct marketing as well. And I think that's, you know, where I feel most comfortable 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, you are in that way. No, I would say the same thing. I'd say, actually, I agree with you, Jordan, and what you were saying yeah. is because I feel like, okay, I wouldn't necessarily start only with brokers. I'm not going to only do that if I'm an emerging brand. I'm yeah. not just only going to do that. I'm going to focus on marketing too, and we're going to do that at the same time. But I, I think, I don't know, I feel like we're probably all on the same page here that portals aren't going to be a very good return on your time or your money, necessarily. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, as a, again, as a franchisor, how do you think about return on investment mm -hmm. right, when you're thinking about selling a franchise? What is that balance? How much are you willing to pay either a broker or through marketing mm -hmm. to sell a new franchise? What does and that need to look I like? I can answer it from being a franchisor yeah. and having worked now with hundreds. Every day I spend half my day talking to franchisors about their plans, their strategy, their expectations, yep. and how can we make more money together. So ultimately, any smart franchise development plan mm -hmm. is not built around if we're going to go out of business if we don't make money selling franchises. Mm, that's good. Now, emerging brands, a lot of times, that's the facts of life, and ain't, ain't no change in it because they can't get the loan, et cetera. Yep. They need to know franchising is a big boy's, big girl's business. Uh, they need to have some money set aside for the 08 crashes of the world. Right. Sure. But regardless, sure. they need to not just put all their eggs in one basket. Right. Brokers sure. are a huge part of it, but direct marketing and all the different facets can be a huge part of it, too. You, you said something that, that's got me a little bit fired up. Oh, oh. 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 Red doesn't even know what's about to happen. Is Red no. no. I, I think it's time. Damn. Buying a business is serious business. It requires yes. big investments. Yep. Right? Preach it. Yes, I'm going to preach. Yes, I am going to preach. <laughs> Selling a business to someone requires serious investment, right? Yep. So what I what I get really frustrated about, we talk to franchise brands all the time, and they have just unrealistic expectations sometimes on how much they need to invest and where they need to invest yep. to drive the proper lead volume and the proper types of leads yep. into their franchise funnel so they can get great candidates and sell a franchise to an owner who can then succeed and grow their brand in their local market. We, we see all the time, way too often to be honest with you, that franchises want to come to us and want to talk about marketing, but they only want to spend, ah, I want to spend $3,000 a month in online marketing and advertising. And they expect to get leads, great leads, yeah, at $100 probably. per. Yeah. And it's been a big re-education. It's hard to get them to think differently. We have created this insane model. Yes. Half the world's going to buy. I'm going to be a billionaire next month. And <laughs> I'm going to give you a grand and you're going to sell me three. You know? right. yeah. And so yeah. you got to set realistic expectations. And sometimes they're not going to listen. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. How, how, well, just tell us, how have you been doing that? Like, how, You've yeah, been in this the, industry for such a long time. What's that education process like? How do we, how do, we do that? So I just take real life facts and okay. I say, this isn't red numbers, this is worldwide real numbers. Okay. The average franchise opportunity could be, you know, it could be 20 grand, it could be two or three million, mm -hmm. but it tends to be in that, you know, 150 to 350, right? Yep. All in investment, okay? Yep. I don't care where you're at, Mr. Mr. Emerging, I'm telling you that. Number two, the average franchise investment, initial franchise fee, mm -hmm. 20 years ago, it might have been 20 or 25. Today, it's approaching 50. Right. And a lot of times, I hear a gasp. <gasps> yep. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we're at 28 or whatever. Right. You know? <laughs> and, then, and then I'll say, now, that's facts. If you're not there, I don't know where you're at, but you need to get up there. And then, lastly, the, the commissions. You're going to be paying a ton of people through this 50 or 25 or whatever your franchise fee. You got an internal staff you got to pay. You got to keep the lights on. Yep. Yeah. You got to pay a lot of stuff. Your marketing plan. Yep. And yeah. guess what? Some commissions to the brokers if you're working with them. Sure. Right. And so the average commission, and they're like, oh, tell me, tell me, tell me. Get your pen out. Okay, ready? 28,000. Mm -hmm. They're thinking it's 15, five, I don't right. know. Yeah. Right. But, uh, the, and, and then when they go, wait a minute, my whole franchise fee is 28. You need to reevaluate your plan. Yeah. You've got a, a, an 80-year-old franchise attorney who just doesn't know what they're doing anymore yeah. in the real world because you're going to do direct marketing. You're going to do every, all these pieces. And so the biggest, I guess the moral of that story, and sorry to go on this rant, but the moral of the story is, the biggest mistake I see franchisors, especially emerging brands, make is they set their IFF way too low. Mm -hmm. Right. Way too low. Got it. Got well, it. I appreciate you joining in on my rant. That's what we call, <laughs> yeah. so we call yeah. a jam, jam drop. drop. A jam drop. Yep. With a red assist. A red rant. A red rant. <laughs> a red rant. Oh, yes. Red <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should trademark that before Patrick does. Yeah, no, I've got a lot of trademarks coming up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So let's we've 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 talked a little bit about the different ways that you can go about marketing a franchise, working with portals, probably not working with brokers. There's Absolutely. typically a yeah. mix between brokers and marketing. We see that as well. I think yep. we all agree with that. Yep. Yes, we do. Let's take it back to the franchisor, though. You're in the people business at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. That's so right. you gotta have the right people in the right seats yep. on the bus, yep. 
right? And make sure that you're positioning value your franchise. It makes perfect sense. Well, yeah. even with brands, brands that partner with us to go and drive them quality leads. Right. The conversations, the expectations, we're getting them to uh, your discovery day. And then you, Mr. or Mrs. Franchisor, it's up to you and your responsibility to decide if that new prospect is good for your culture and how important yeah, that is good. for your brand. Yeah. We want to drive you to their discovery day. You guys need to no decide one knows, if that franchise. No one knows you better than you. No doubt about it. You have to have and that you know what? If it's not the right, if they're consistently not getting the right buyer, then tweak the marketing plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get a different right. person. That's why you guys are so good at what you do. Yeah. Back in the day when I was doing my own SEO, that was one thing. Today, couldn't touch that world. Yep. Yeah, it's yep. definitely gotten more complex. Changing That's every for sure. day. Yes. Yeah, and look, I think I think the other thing from a marketing perspective, the one thing that we typically do try to advise our franchise clients around and when it comes to franchise development marketing is, look, we know that you don't have an endless supply of budget to spend in marketing. And we know that you also probably are going to be working with brokers and doing some other things. Yep. But we do want to give them guidance for based on the budget that they do have what are the right channels from a digital marketing perspective to really focus that budget in? Mm -hmm. So we've had some clients come to us and say, hey, I've got a $10,000 budget. And we say, okay, great. Monthly? Yeah, monthly. Monthly, monthly, yeah. yeah. Where do you want to focus that budget? Well, I want to... I want to sell a franchise anywhere. I, I've got the whole, the world is my oyster. The alert, alert. Yeah. <laughs> alert, alert, alert. <laughs> so many Zors don't realize how important it is to know your ideal franchisee. Oh, man. Yeah. Preach. Really, Preach. Really, really. I mean, we can do a You want to do a red rant on that? Red rant. Oh, you Whoops. know what we have? You know what we have? We have a red rant. Red rant. Oh, yeah. Red rant. We oh, yeah. do need a red pen, though. Yeah, That's true. Right. Can you all write TM next to that? I don't want red. Oh, no. Patrick has trademarked it. I think royalties already. <laughs> True. Let's get our attorneys Un- on it. Unpack Quick. that a little bit. So the, phones, the, importance, the importance of knowing your ideal buyer. You're going to waste a ton of time, a ton of money on just the, the shotgun approach. I wasted a ton myself, yeah. not yeah. really understanding who that buyer was. You know, do they have 2.3 kids and, and a dog? And do they live in this community? Yeah. There's so much big data on folks now. You can yeah. go, you, you guys know better than anybody. You can go down deep, deep, That's deep right. and target them. And, and, for a fraction of what I used to spend no to shoot this shotgun. Yes. This Just because you know, you can find out that information. Oh you don't have to waste any time I'm, going here and yeah, there. I'm scared to know what they know about me, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we as brokers, <laughs> we as IPG and the consultant community, we spend so much time as Zors, and they think we're weird for this, asking them, who is your ideal candidate? We need to know. And we put that in their profile so our consultants, over 500 yep. now, can go out there and many of them probably use you guys. I yep. mean, they're out marketing to find ideal buyers for those franchisors too. So it's like when you're getting married, you know, people yeah. say all the time, franchising is like marriage. The Zor and the Z marrying together. You yep. got a 20-year agreement or what have you. Yep. Same thing. You got to know who you're going after. Yeah. Are you just going to walk up to anybody and start flirting? Other no. than you. you understood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I love this. I love this. So a couple other questions. I want to talk about the importance of lead follow-up. Mm. Right, because again, that is a big issue that we see in the direct marketing side. Is we're we're big on tracking mm-hmm. all of our marketing efforts. Mm-hmm. So we want to know how many phone calls we're driving into the brand that are inquiries about pur- purchasing a franchise. Yeah. How many emails yeah, or form emails submissions or form we're driving from the website? Maybe we're running a social campaign where someone can fill out the form directly yeah. on Facebook yep. or on LinkedIn. So we do track all these things so we can show our clients, hey, our this is how many leads you, you've gotten mm-hmm. over the last you know, X number of days, months, weeks, years, et cetera. A problem that we see <laughs> universally across the board is follow-up. Yeah. yeah. Right? Tell Absolutely. us, do you share that? Do you share I'm, that? I'm view? curious, marketing side, would you have ever asked about follow-up? Is that something on your your mind follow up to? Yeah, yeah one hundred percent. Because we're we're having the yeah, conversations to, all the time, justifying yeah. what you did. Yeah, we need to. You're um, blaming it on sales, is why you're. Having yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, really, never, we never blame time. everything. On oh sales. man, time. okay, <laughs> children, children, children. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I go to the Franchise Leadership and Development Conference every year, and they do an insanely great report. They survey franchisors for hours. I fill out that every year, and then look at the results. Blows my stinking mind that they come every year, year yeah. after year after year, they come back with all this data, and one of them, to your point, is over half yep. of all leads don't get, I'm not talking follow-up, they don't do even, not get one call. Call. Don't even call. Wow. I mean, what are we doing? I know. Why are we in business? Yeah. I mean, no. you got to follow up. This is golden. These are the Glengarry leads. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no. yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Coffee is for closers. It, it sure is. is. It sure is. is Cheers. Cheers. Uh, yeah. Okay, so. That's not coffee in there. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of franchises, Speaking Red, of- Red you, you're kind of your own franchise 
<laughs> in the franchise. There is no doubt. You've got a, a very rich history in franchising, mm-hmm. right? You're out networking all the time. You're on social media and have done a, a fantastic job building a brand. A big part of your brand are the red vans. The red vans. No doubt and I noticed it. that you're wearing the red vans today. You want to lift yeah. those up? I might be. Yeah. Oh, wow. Flexibility. Whoa. What's going on here? Whoa. Yeah, that was yes. unbelievable. Blown away. It was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's the best thing that's happened. Wow. Today. Okay. All right. Well, All speaking right. of those. Yeah, so a big part of the red franchise brand are the red vans. They're the red vans. Yeah. Everybody so knows we, it. So look, we took it upon ourselves okay. to Ooh. buy a red Boswell franchise. Oh, we, we did. did. What we did, we, we bought a couple of pairs of red vans. We did. Yeah. And we decided that we'd make them our own. And you'll we want to show see. you you'll see. our yeah. spin, our personal spins on the red vans. You up for this? Down. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay. So let's, we got our props here. So let's go ahead and pull these out, yeah, guys. I love this. Am I allowed now, to look? Yeah, yeah you, you can look. look. Yeah. No, here's yeah, they're the just boxes. Here's what, uh. here's, here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a reveal one at a time. Yep. All right, we're going to start with Jordan. Good. Love right. that. I want you to talk about your inspiration. Understood. How wow. you modified your franchise. Understood. Right? Wait, hang on, hang on. <laughs> He's excited. Red, red, red. I Open want you to make up. comments, but I don't want okay. you to vote until on your favorite until all of us have gone. I loved through. being a judge. Okay. <laughs> all right, cool. Who didn't like a so Jordan, judge? Right? Jordan, Jordan, let's, see those, let's see those red vans. So I'm gonna bring, here's my red vans. Okay. okay. So here was my thought. Sometimes maybe you've got a tough day, right? Yeah. I'm in sales, mm-hmm. maybe. Maybe it was just a rough one, right? Okay. So sometimes when you've had a rough day, you look down. And my thought was words of affirmation on yeah, my red that's vans. My love so that's my love dream language. big, yeah. it oh, says. Nice. Um, live loud, it uh, says. <laughs> Keep pushing, bring it today. That those are my wow. these are my vans. I gotta be honest, when you pull those out, my first reaction was that that's it. You're not the judge. No, but listen, listen, I want to give you kudos because the way that you contextualize what you did and why you did it, it was awesome. I appreciate that. I'd buy that pair for that reason. I'm going to wear them to... uh, I don't like them on the same side, honestly. (laughs) Do you? No. I don't don't need that. I'm going to go next. This can't be right. Okay. So listen, I'm a minimalist. Yes, you are. And I also Mm -hmm. don't really have a great eye for design. That's valid. But I am a patriot. Oh, okay. In 2020 is an election year. American hero. So I brought back MTV. Rock the vote. You yeah. Guys yeah. 2020. Yeah. So I got a, I got a rock the vote on the right side, and then I just got a straight up vote. Good. Yeah. On the 2020, left big vote yeah. year. Yeah. Big nice. voting year. Yep. I felt good about it. It's great. Mm. This is a prototype. Right. Did well. Okay. But I feel good well. about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you did great. I love them. Appreciate that. Yeah. Leave them out. Leave them out. For okay. Them. All right. Yeah. All right. Julia. Julia, yeah, let's go to you. This is what I ended up doing here. Oh, so come on. They're, still, they're still a little bit Lay light. In on this. <laughs> Just put them in the box. Yeah. My thought process here is um, I wanted to bring a little of my sparkly personality oh, to the it. shoes. That's and great. everyone who knows me well knows I love black and gold. So I wanted to bring that to the shoes here. Yes. It's not as touching as a story as you gents, but it is definitely more beautiful. So there's that. It's a lot. You know what, beautiful. though, Julia? It is a touching story because I know, I know mm. the inspiration, the true inspiration behind that. Yep. I want Her to favorite football team. The avid football fan that <laughs> no! you are. The avid no! football fan that you are. And oh, yeah. Julia knows that I'm a massive New Orleans Saints fan. It's so all for you, there's Jamie. There's no other reason that you would put black and gold that on the That looks purple and gold fans. to me, but I'm colorblind. <laughs> no. All right, I like this. Yes. This, this feels good to me. I feel okay. like this, this was, next one's going to be a treat. Well, before I open it up, I just like to talk about how I got here. Okay. Because Jamie's not the only one that did some research on you. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I did some research, and I just happen to know that your favorite movie franchise Mm -hmm. is The Fast and the Furious. (laughs) Yep. That's that's not it. That's not it. How did you know? Yeah. (laughs) Well, so I've got... (laughs) So His or yours? Here. <laughs> yeah. You've got a fast foot and a furious foot. That's good. Woo, right there. The fast has some fire coming off of it. Okay. The furious has some barbed wire. Oh, yeah. Okay. <sighs> Around, you'll find some inspirational quotes. Live my life a quarter mile at a time, because I know we both do. <laughs> and the piece de resistance, as they say yeah, in, our they say. in our French. <laughs> This car with fire coming off the back and the fact that it says NOS right here. Okay. (laughs) You know, and so I'm pretty certain that you're going to love these. I don't think we need to vote. Here you go. Okay. Do they fit? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure they do based on my research. All right. You've got sales motivation. Yep. You've got Rock the Vote. American Patriot. 
You got yeah. the New Orleans apparently Saints. Apparently, you got the Saints, apparently. And you got the Fast and the Furious. Red. Yes. Woo. Pick a winner. First of all, some folks stepped outside of the brand standards. Though. Mm. That's oh. true. Oh. Franchises have brand standards. It's true. It's true. Yes. Yeah. This true is statement. Not one of them. No, you're totally okay. right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Interesting point. Save that for another this episode. Qualifies, yeah. perhaps. I think so. I yep, think okay. so. Yep, probably just um, qualify. Let's see. We got uh, red, white, and blue. Very patriotic. How can I vote against America? I you can't. Uh-huh. I, I'm uh-huh. with you. Yeah. Little bland, but I go for that. Yeah, Less is more. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I, Feel free to read everyone. This one I'm a fan of, but why do you have marketing sucks on here? That's oh, not Jordan. <laughs> That's, That's so nice. mean. Extra points. <laughs> Thank great. you. Red? <laughs> As I told all my kids when I coached a few sports in the day, we're all winners. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We uh-huh. we that's right. All right. Yes. Yeah, all right. Some right. of us are bigger winners than others, but you know, yeah. it's all, yeah. all yeah. winners. We don't like you know. participation trophies around here. We yeah. need it's, a clear it, winner. It would be equal, except one person happens to get a little bit of bonus points. Okay. okay. Do you know why? Uh, red hair, come on. Oh! Red time, Mafia. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Never. Mafia. You guys don't even know. We what have side what side are you, you on? No idea. I'm on the red hair side. I'm Mark, sorry. What the red just have me. I'm on the side. You're not. I love you so much. So what's your oh, what's your okay. saying? The, the the moral of that story though is that even if you go off brand standard. You, you can be no. brought back into yes, the fold. Yes, you, you can. You, yeah, it's not, well, it's not, listen, who's most on brand here right Grace. now? Hey. Who's most on brand? Grace is good. Grace. That's uh, a good me. point. You got a good point. Yeah. You, have, you have a natural brand affinity. I do. That's right. do. I think you wore these a few days. <laughs> 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 okay, so Red, before we wrap up. Guys, we have a problem. Oh, mm. This just in. Live studio audience problem? Oh, or? gosh. You got to read this out loud? My mom call? Oh, no. This can't be real. Oh, oh look real. at this. Just the, it has come to our attention that one Patrick Crawford has been shopping the idea of a male-friendly lingerie store using the copyrighted name Sup Bra. <laughs> because this idea is trademarked and copyrighted with the United States Copyright Office, we ask that any and all communication, transactions, and promotions of this idea or term cease immediately. <laughs> Please contact our lawyers if you have any questions. No, no, Sincerely. No, no. Red Julia got you. Cook Yo! Enterprises. Sorry. Whoa. Yeah. 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 I told you. Oh, you should have done it, man. Be to the punch. You snooze your little. Uh, Can you throw this at the camera? No, I will not. But you I'll do it. it. But you've got the <laughs> usual. Per usual, Julia demonstrates how she outsmarts all of the guys on set. That's Always. right. <laughs> right? She completely Pretty sabotaged too. a brand right out from under Patrick. Right it's very good. Just went with good. Savvy. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Red, thanks again for joining thanks, us. Thanks, guys. Great it was time. awesome. It's been a pleasure. Guys, been some love. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 for yeah, sure, for sure. Guys, until next time, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Dial It Up. It was a pleasure having you with us. Until next time, this is Jamie, Jordan, Julia, Patrick, and Mr. Red Boswell. Hey, baby. <laughs> signing off. We'll see you next time here on Dial It Up. Peace. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode of Dial It Up, please subscribe and also hit that little bell so you can be notified when we have new episodes.